Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer State, this is Coloring Bliss, and welcome to this episode where we are going to be discussing how to prepare just a standard piece of cardstock or a coloring page so that you can apply watercolors to it. Okay, now before we get started, I want to remind you to stay tuned to the end of the video because we have a giveaway going on and I want you to have a chance to win these beautiful products. I'll tell you all about it at the end of the video. And also at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how you can download this cute little autumn fox with his little owl friend. This is the page I'm going to be working on today during this video. So if you'd like to download this, stay tuned to the end of the video. I'll tell you all about it. Okay, let's get to the project. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to prepare a surface so that you can use watercolors or other very wet medium on just like a standard piece of cardstock or in a coloring book or maybe you're working on a greeting card that you want to add watercolor to. Now, if you've ever used a watery type art product on just a standard piece of paper, you know what happens. That piece of paper will absorb it. Um, sometimes the paper pills up. You can't get cool effects. It's really difficult. And so you need to either use watercolor paper because watercolor paper is special, has treatments on it called... Steve, what is it called? Sizing. Sizing. That's Steve, my husband and business partner. <laughs> um, I always ask him that question. It's kind of an inside joke. <laughs> so sizing is a treatment that they put on watercolor paper so that it can handle the wet media that we use with watercolor. Now with our standard paper, this is really good cardstock here, and I want to treat it now so that I can use some gouache, which is a watery type of paint paint on it. So what we're going to do is um, prep it. There's lots of different ways to prep it. We've talked about it before here on our channel, but I have something new and a little shiny that I want to share with you. Now my current favorite product for treating my coloring pages is this little guy right here. This is the Daniel Smith Transparent Watercolor Ground. I've shown you this before. So it's really good. It's transparent so you can lay it down over your coloring page and the line work still shows through. So like I said, you can use this product on all kinds of different art, not just on coloring pages. It's also good on wood, on plastic, on glass, all kinds of different products, and it preps that surface with a little bit of tooth or texture, and it makes it ready and uh, accepting, accepting? Um, happy to accept. <laughs> a watercolor type medium. So this little product is amazing. Now there's other products as well, like gessos. This is a clear gesso. So again, once you lay it down, it should dry clear and allow you to see your line work. So this is a really good one to try as well. The thing I don't like about the clear gessos is it usually lays down an even more textured surface. So I kind of don't like that. I like this one a little better. Less texture, but you still get the protection you need so that you can use your wet mediums. You're also going to run into other kinds of mediums, is what these are called. When you go down that aisle in the art store or your craft store, there's all kinds of bottles like this. Gel mediums and uh, acrylic mediums, watercolor mediums, I mean oil paint mediums, just tons of things to learn about. And some of them work great for this. This one here is an acrylic based medium. So what that means is it's going to lay down um, almost a plasticky surface with no grit or texture at all. So very um, smooth um, surface. So if you think about that, like a plasticky surface, and then you come on top of it with a watercolor, it's almost gonna bead up and roll off. You'd be able to do a little bit of watercolor on top of this, but it would be a frustrating experience. So this type of a prep is not perfect. It works, but it's not what I'm going for. So like I said, this is my current favorite. This bottle, um, I think at 
dickblick.com and I'll put links to this one is only eight dollars a bottle and it has lasted me a long time I think I still have about a third of a bottle in here or a jar I guess this is a jar but this is the one that caught my eye the other day this is Daniel Smith watercolor ground so the same stuff except this one is iridescent gold that's right iridescent gold and it still is supposed to dry transparent so we should still be able to see all the lines of our artwork but instead of just clear when it's done we should have an iridescent gold Ooh, fancy. <laughs> yes now they also have a pearlescent white transparent that I was so very tempted to purchase as well <laughs> but my budget wouldn't let me do it so <laughs> this one here is $12 for the jar so a little bit more expensive than just the clear but for a little bling I am very pleased to spend the money on it. So I've already shaken the jar a bit. It didn't say I needed to, but what we're going to do is use this brush here to apply it. It's a nice big two inch um, brush. It has very smooth bristles, so I'm hoping to lay it down with as few brush strokes as possible, but I'm not too mad at brush strokes. Now the jar says we can do more than one coat if we want a more depth a more, how can I say it, a stronger tint to the page and more of a gold pearlescent, um, what are they calling it, iridescent finish. So it's kind of up to me as the artist how I want to lay this down. So what we're going to do is tape this down with some low tack painter's tape onto this, which is my trusty pa uh, plastic cutting board. This is a very cheap cutting board I picked up at my local dollar store and then we'll see how this lays down. So I'm going to just kind of time lapse my prep and lay down my first coat and I'll come back and let you know how the experience is going. So let's go ahead and hit the time lapse. Okay, we got one coat of the watercolor ground onto the page. Now, this brush worked fantastic. What I did was dip it into my water just to get it prepped, the bristles prepped, and then I used the watercolor ground. I didn't have to use hardly any. This is going to last a long time. Look how beautiful this stuff is. So shiny. It's a beautiful gold color. I love a nice yellowy gold. I don't like a green gold so this is exactly the kind of color I love. Then as soon as I got that coat down I went and washed my brush out and it washed out really easily. I just used a little bit of warm water and a little bit of like dish soap and scrubbed it into the palm of my hand and the this ground washed right out really easily. So now my brush is clean. So let's take a look. This isn't dry yet. Now the jar does say to let it dry naturally for like 24 to 48 hours. I don't have that kind of time. I never think ahead like that. So I will be using my heat gun. It warns not to use a heat gun, but you know, yeah, who has time to sit here for 24 hours? But check out the shine we're already getting and it hasn't even dried yet. So the idea here is that it's going to leave this pearlescent, iridescent shine in the background and then the watercolor that you put on top, that shine is going to shine up through and give it a nice glow. Now the thing I'm excited about with this gold tone is because this is an autumn coloring page, it's going to fit the color scheme I have in mind really well. And then the kind of paint we're going to use is called gouache and it's a very matte paint. So it's going to, I think, work really well because when you have something really shiny, it's really important to have something that is really matte to sort of balance and give the eye a place to rest. So I think the two together are gonna to work really well. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a minute. But I wanna show you, usually you can see the shine of something better when you hold it up this way. And we're not even dry yet. The areas where it is dry, there's definitely more shine going on. So I think one coat is definitely enough. I can still see the illustrating lines. Um, 
but I wouldn't want to go a second coat. I think we might lose some of those illustrator lines. Uh, it would be interesting to swatch. Maybe I'll grab, um, I have a second printout of the coloring page because our printer didn't print it quite right. It printed it too far offset. So maybe another, let's do it. Let's do a little sample of what it would look like if we did two coats of it because I am really curious to see what would happen. So there's what it looks like. And let's just go right over his face with the first coat like that. And let's see, I'm gonna rinse it out into my rinse water here so my brush doesn't have a problem. And we'll use the heat gun now. I'm gonna use the heat gun on both dry both down and put a second coat onto this one and we'll just kind of see there's my heat gun we'll just kind of see what happens um if it's too much when you're going over line work or not it's going to be a very interesting experience so i'll time lapse this so you don't have to sit through the drying Okay, I think we've got everything dried down now. Here is our test here with the two coats of the watercolor ground. Definitely um, too thick, at least for my purposes today. Um, it makes it really hard to see the illustration lines. And it almost makes it less iridescent, I think. This is very interesting. Okay, and then here is our piece that we're working on today. And let me move it in the light so you can see. You can see definitely where it went down thicker um, and it's got a different texture there. That's that um, tooth that the ground leaves behind. You can feel that. But overall, I'm very pleased with it. I don't mind the different textures because uh, watercolor and what we're about to do with this project, um, it, doesn't it doesn't matter to me that it has different textures. So let me show you the paint we're going to use now to go on top of this. Um, before we get started on that, I want to comment that if you love working with water-based mediums like watercolor markers, watercolors, gouache, all of those types of products, but you don't want to go to the trouble of prepping pages like this, but you like to color, um, come on over to Coloring Bliss and check out our print shop because we have watercolor paper as an option to our coloring books. So you'll just be able to print a coloring book on our watercolor paper and you can skip all of this step and just get straight to coloring with your watercolor products. So that's an awesome option for you if you don't want to do any of this. Okay, so what I have today that we're going to be working with are these palettes right here. So with our um, different kinds of membership levels over at Coloring Bliss, one of them are the Bliss Partners. And we teach different workshops so that all of our Bliss Partners have lots of different art mediums that they can use with their art projects and coloring. Right now we are learning how to color with gouache paints. And I did this really fun coloring page right here for them. Demonstrated how to do this in real time so that they can color along with with me and at the end of that project I had these palettes with all of this paint that is still usable this is gouache paint so it dries really matte and it dries really cracky onto the palettes 
but it's all usable. I can wake it back up with a little bit of water and still use it. So the challenge to myself, I'm going to give myself, is to use all of this leftover paint on this little fox and his little friend, the owl. So that's my challenge. I'm only going to use what's left over on my little palettes here. So I'm gonna slip this water over and the way we're going to wake this paint up is with this little spritzer and you just go over your palette with it and that starts the waking up process and then I can use my brush and my water and continue to wake it up. So I need to be kind of thoughtful about where I put my colors. We have lots of oranges and, and some yellows and some browns, um, but our background here and our um, the iridescent gold is already in those tones. So I don't want everything to become sort of one color, um, but like I said, this is very matte, so we have that going for us, the shiny versus the matte gouache dries very matte and it's also a very opaque um, art medium so um, the more water I add to it the more translucent and more watercolory it's going to behave so I have that that I can work with as well. So that's my painting challenge that I have. If you'd like to learn how to paint and do this type of fun project with your coloring pages or other art projects with gouache paint, then come on over and learn about how to become a Bliss Partner. It's a four-part workshop where I teach you all about gouache and how to create effects like this with your gouache paints. So check out the link in the video description for that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and time lapse, let you watch me work on this for a few minutes and then I'll stop and let you know how I'm feeling about working on the Daniel Smith watercolor ground and any little hints and tips I can give you about working with leftover paint that you have on your palettes. So let's get this art project going. Okay, we are um, done with the fox 
part of the coloring. So I wanted to take a break and show you how adorable this is turning out. And every time I work with gouache, I'm reminded how much I adore gouache. If you've tried watercolor and were like, eh, I don't know if I like it, but there's something there that you kind of like, you need to try gouache because it's amazing. <laughs> okay, let me show you how cool this is turning out. Look at the shading I'm getting on the the fox. How adorable it is. And that gold, the Daniel Smith transparent ground underneath, it just got rid of all the white. So I don't have to worry about that with the, um, the paint. All I'm worrying about is getting the really pretty blends and making my little um, fox look adorable. I am using some of the black gouache to come back and add some of the line, but I'm on purpose doing it broken, the line, so that any of the original line art shining up through the paint and through the transparent ground um, looks like it's part of the line that I've added back in. Plus, I'm not really steady with my brush with line work yet. I need to practice that. So, you know, go with your, your um, weaknesses <laughs> and do some little jotted lines with it. I'm using this um, round number six to do the line work and it's working really well. So I'm really happy with my fox. I have a plan for the leaves in his head here um, that is going to involve some sparkly gel pens. So hang on for that. Next part is the owl and I'm going to use the blues off of the palette right here for the owl. That's why I only did a very light tint of the blue on the background, but I had so much fun with the green around the fox down here. I laid down quite an opaque layer of the green with the gouache, so I'm not expecting a lot of the shine of the, the transparent ground to show through it, but let's move it a little bit in the light and see how much shine we are seeing come through the gouache. Like I said, gouache, um, is is a opaque medium. It's not like watercolor where it's translucent by nature. So there's going to be areas where we'll see some of the shine come through because I used a lot of water in the gouache, but then there'll be areas where I've used a lot of gouache and there won't be any shine. And that's good because we want moments of of relief from the shine so that when the shine does happen, your eyes go, ooh, look at that. What was that that just happened? So you can see in the background up here where I did a really light tint of the blue, we're getting a lot of shine from that background transparent Daniel Smith ground. And then down here where I did a lot of gouache, it's very matte. So that's exactly what I was hoping would happen. There's moments where you've got the bling coming through and then moments where your eye can rest in the matte of the gouache paint. So everything is working the way I want. I'm going to work on my little owl now and then I'm going to work on the leaves. So I'll come back and show you my plan for the leaves. And then I also have a plan to add back a little twinkle in the eyes. And then we're gonna pull the paint, um, the tape off of the, the whole thing and do the big reveal at the end. And I also have another really cool coloring page to show you that Steve has created for us. So. Lots to talk about, so let's keep the time lapse rolling and I will share with you how it turns out here in a little bit.
Okay, we're going to add some white highlights now, and if you are looking for a good product to use for white highlights, gouache is the thing to get. Just one nice tube of gouache, um, I think it's titanium white you want to look for, um, is a perfect product for white highlights. It's really opaque, it's quick and easy, and you can make the little catch, what are they called, Steve? Catch lights. Catch lights in the eyes really quick and easy. Make our little fox and our little owl look like they're looking at each other with a little glimmer. I like how my owl turned out. I on purpose left some of the gold, um, the gold watercolor ground left in his eye there. So when we move it in the light, it should shine. I need to activate this water a little bit more. There, now it should be easier. So I think the last thing to do on my coloring page here, I'm gonna add a little shine on his nose, a little shine here, a little shine here, shine here, shine on the beak. The last thing I need to do is color the leaves. And for that I'm gonna use a whole bunch of my metallic and shiny um, gel pens. I'm gonna try to use all of my autumn colored ones, my sparkle pop pens, my jelly roll pens, and just color them up really quick not um, too much, probably just a quick scribble blends, nothing too fancy there, um, so that they will look all pretty and autumny. I'm just adding a few highlights here and there to make them look a little cartoony. Uh, gouache dries really fast too, that makes it another really good reason to use them for highlights. Look at that strong highlight, so good. I'm going to add another catch light in the eyes, just because. There. Very twinkly and cute. Okay, so let's color up the leaves really quick, and then we'll do the big reveal. Okay, I was having so much fun with these gel pens. I can't help but add a few bits of glitz and glamour into the grass too with my two green sparkle pop pens. Actually, one's a crazy pop and one's a sparkle pop. If you don't own these, why don't you own these? <laughs> okay. All right, I think I have added all the details I wanted to add, so let's pull the tape. While I'm pulling the tape, I want Steve to tell you about another coloring page that he has made available for all of you to come download. It's an image from one of our travels, isn't it, Steve? Yeah. So you make grayscale coloring pages for everybody. And I believe this was from one of the campgrounds. That I mean, we stayed at, <clears throat> right? It was in Montana, yep. Um, when we were there, and they had this really cool classic Dodge power wagon. Here's the photo of it. Um, it was just a cool, um, cool really truck cool there. cool truck that they had decorating their campground grounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's really pretty with the flowers yeah. and everything. And uh, we both thought, hey, that'd make a cool grayscale coloring mm -hmm. page. So this time I did it a little bit different than I usually do with grayscale. Oh, this is the first time I'm seeing it. <laughs> that turned out really cool, Steve. I love the 
Yeah, the so stylized. I, I usually do try to make them look somewhat artistic, but this one I really took it far and tried to make it look like it was uh, drawing. A drawing. Rather than a really cool. So, Steve, tell them how to come and get this grayscale coloring page. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, so it's um, on our website. We'll just put a link in the description. Okay. So you can come get that. Awesome. Okay, if you're like me, you love watching the paint being peeled off of a painting. So we've got two more pieces to pull off here. Look at that crisp edge we got. <laughs> Beautiful. By the way, after you download this, let me know if you like that style. Okay. Just kind of experimenting here. Yeah, so give Steve some feedback on that. Oh, that's satisfying. Look at that. So all in all, as a surface prep, the once again, super impressed with using the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. It worked fantastic. I was able to put as much water as I wanted to onto this piece of cardstock, and it didn't go through almost no warping, as you can see on this piece of cardstock. And we still have shine coming through. Of course, the shine right here is from the gel pens that I used. Uh, and then I was able to strategically use some of the shine like here in the eyes of the owl and then a very light wash of the gouache to give it a blue tint back here. And then overall, it's just given the entire page just this warm glow. Um, yeah, look at that. Oh, I am just so happy with how this turned out. Just so happy. Really pretty. I am excited to use this in more coloring pages. So if you love to use watercolor products in your coloring pages or other art products and you've wondered how you can use it with standard cardstock or in other circumstances, then the Daniel Smith watercolor ground could become your best friend. And these really cool, um, there's the pearlescent white that I haven't tried yet, but now I think I may have to order it. And this one, the gold one, which is called iridescent gold. I highly recommend it. Look at that just really pleasant shine all the way in the background and then of course the bling of the gel pens there in the leaves. It's beautiful. All right, you made it to the end of the video and now I get to tell you how you can win these really beautiful zebra products. We've got a full set of mild liner brush pens and the beautiful metallic brush pens by Zebra. If you wanna win these, you've got just until the end of September 2020 for your chance to win these. So follow the link in the video description. The winner will be announced October 1st, 2020. Good luck everyone. And if you're watching this after this giveaway is over, don't dismay, just make sure you have subscribed to our channel so that you don't miss out on our next giveaway. We've got a big one coming up. I'm so excited about it. Also, if you would like to download this adorable little fox and his little owl friend and have a chance to color it, all you need to do is follow the link in the video description and come on over to Coloring Bliss. Now we have a premium library where this little fox lives and to get access to that premium library and over 500, it's close to 600 coloring pages, you will become a colorist. It's only $5 a month and you'll get access to all of that and support me and Coloring Bliss. So come on over, become a member and enjoy coloring this sweet little fox. Okay, one last look at my cute little owl and its little friend, the fox. <laughs> Very happy with it, how it turned out. I think it might have to go on the back wall. I'm that happy with it. <laughs> Very happy. Thanks everybody for joining us and I hope you all have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye everyone.